Hi, this is Sky Nelson Isaacs, author of Living in Flow, The Science of Synchronicity, and How Your Choices Shape Your World. And I want to give you a little information about the course that's coming up, the Living in Flow course, and a question that often arises that I address in the course, which is how do I make sense of living in flow in a world where really bad things can happen or where I have a lot of difficulties at work or um, you know, have negative experiences in, in politics in the world or whatever it might be. A world that is often filled with fear and, and resistance and pain. How do I turn away from paralyzing fear, which stops me from acting, to motivating fear, which gives me the momentum to get up off the couch and go do something? One of the surprising, but I think really, really important tools that I've come to in my own learning around flow and synchronicity is experiencing grief or its cousins, loss and disappointment. You know, anything that happens in life that is disappointing, in my experience, is a form of grief. At a small scale, there's some loss, some disappointment, some, some pain, and some grief that occurs. And when we resist the flow of experiences in our lives, in other words, when we resist feeling grief about something, when we're disappointed about a grade we get on a test, or we're disappointed about missing the bus to work, we feel a set of reactive experiences in our body of emotions. And if we resist that feeling, it, literally just the sensation in our chest, I'm not saying you have to process the emotion and talk about it with people, but I'm saying allowing the experience and the feeling in your chest, the sensation in your chest to, to occur, then that experience allows you to not act to resist a bad feeling. It actually allows you more freedom to choose. If we're resisting feeling bad about like missing the bus and being late for work, then all sorts of dialogue comes into our heads about how we're going to, how it's not really our fault, for instance. Maybe it's my wife's fault or my spouse's fault for making me late. So then I'm grumpy for the rest of the day about my spouse. And when I get home, I have an argument with her. But that's all because I was resisting the experience of the sensation of grief or disappointment in my chest when I was late for the bus. And I had fear about my manager getting mad at me. And that all contributed to a resisting of this experience so that I ended up having a backlash against someone that I care about. So feeling grief, allowing disappointment to actually be experienced without creating stories to resist the impact. So one of the tools that I use to deal with the difficult news that I hear in the world or the negative experiences, because life is full of negative, ne negative experiences. Living in flow is not saying that if you look at it right, the life, life is good. Life is always positive. It's saying if you look at it right, everything is a learning experience. And the process of feeling grief is the same as the process of feeling joy. Both of them can be difficult to handle. Both of them, when we allow them to exist in our physical body, we enter into a state of alignment with life so that experiences that show up actually don't get stuck and we don't make them worse, like in the situation where I was late for the bus and I made things worse by then having an argument with my wife about it, which is unnecessary. So living in flow is about a deeper sense of compassion for ourselves because instead of pushing away negative feelings and then getting mad at ourselves or other people to try and resist feeling you know, what we're just feeling about ourselves, we actually become more compassionate with ourselves and we sit with that experience the experience of grief or loss or disappointment doesn't actually have to feel terrible. When we allow it to exist in our chest, it can open us up. And my experience of that is a deeper sense of awe. I'm not, I'm not feeling terrible anymore. I'm actually feeling a deep sense of, wow, this, is, this world is really, really powerful and a lot of people are feeling a lot of things just like I'm feeling right now. And I feel actually pretty connected to the people in my life and compassionate for them because of the depth of my suffering. So we shouldn't try to avoid suffering if we want to live in flow. We should be able to then allow 
whatever experience we're having to flow through us. And we gain, gain, we gain access to the, the greater spectrum of who we are, of our feelings, our experiences. And in the end, that just leads to more of everything, more of abundant living, wholehearted living. And from that come, come experiences that are really fulfilling. Whether they're positive or negative isn't the point. The fact is that they're fulfilling. They give us a deeper sense of who we are and deeper connections to our friends and family. So I think that there are ways to navigate with and relate to the really difficult experiences of life and the terrible news that we get on the radio and the TV every day in ways that build us up and motivate us. Take us from fear of just trying to protect everything we have and trying to push away the, the possibilities that we're afraid of to allowing in those possibilities and coming from the positive fear, which is fear of missing out. Fear of missing out motivates us to get up off the couch and do something. I'm afraid I'm gonna be late for the party I, I don't sit there dwelling in that. I actually get my clothes on and get ready to go. Fear of missing out is a fear of not living fully. And I think that when we live fully and authentically from our heart, from the core of who we are, whatever, wherever that is in our body, then we are not pulled up and down by the different uh, forces of the world and of the news. Being dismayed and despondent about the world is actually maybe a way, possibly, of showing us that we are not living fully. Because if we were living fully, we wouldn't be pulled around by that because we have a solid core in ourselves that knows what it's here to do. That's what I'm after. That's what I want for myself. If that fits for you, try it on. I hope it works. So check out the Living in Flow course. It can be found at the letter youthrivehere.com slash livinginflow. And I hope to see you there.